Last time in the Hoenn True Power Tournament, we saw a back and forth battle between the Titleist trainer Wally and gym leader Winona, who fought head to head until the very end, and only one has punched their ticket to the semifinals. Today, we have the last quarterfinal match as Battle Frontier Brain Annabelle of the Battle Tower takes on the current Hoenn champion, Wallace. Let's head to the team previews to compare their teams. Annabelle returns with her heavily offensive team, and in this battle, she's gonna have to make use of her Lucario and Snorlax in particular, while saving her faster sweepers to pick off any Pokemon that she's damaged. Wallace, on the other hand, returns with his mono water team, and he's really gonna have to utilize his defenses and any type matchups he can to his advantage. Both trainers are ready for battle, so let's head down to the arena for the final quarterfinal matchup. It's time, the final match of the quarterfinals. We've got Wallace, the current champion of Hoenn, versus Annabelle of the Battle Frontier. Wallace starting off the battle with his Swampert, a very tanky lead from him, whereas Annabelle's gonna go in with the Salamence. Salamence is a much more offensive threat, I would say, and the Salamence does have Intimidate too, so that will lower the Swampert's attack, lowering its offensive capabilities as well. And now the Salamence will switch out, Annabelle switching out into the Latios here. An interesting switch from her, where Swampert is going to go with the Stealth Rock here. So Wallace setting up, realizing those Stealth Rocks are going to be important as the battle goes on. But we'll have to see what Annabelle wants to go for here. You'd imagine the Swampert might have Ice Punch, but no, Wallace is going to switch out, realizing that that Swampert with a lowered attack is not going to be of much use. And sending in the Milotic. Now Milotic is a hard counter for Latios, but the Defog coming in here from the Latios. That is a great play there from Annabelle. Now we see why she switched in. She's going to get rid of those Stealth Rocks right away. But again, that Milotic is a big, big counter for Latios. I don't think he can get much damage off at all. And in comes the Snorlax now from Annabelle. Trying to take on this Milotic with the Snorlax and the Ice Beam coming in. A great prediction there from Annabelle, actually, because the Snorlax does have the Thick Fat ability, which will lower the power of those Ice moves. But now a Snorlax has to figure out a way to try and take this Milotic on as Milotic goes for a Scald. Now the Snorlax has to watch out for the burn here on the Scalds, and that was a critical hit, too. Oh, and it gets the burn as well. Oh, my word. A critical hit and a burn on the Snorlax. That is not good at all. That Milotic getting a little bit lucky there. Well, actually, very lucky and now the curse coming in on the Snorlax so Annabelle trying to uh, power this thing up but we'll see what she wants to do here as the Snorlax got a crit and a burn on it now she has used the curse already Snorlax will be able to kind of mitigate that burn damage itself but of course it's uh, its attack will be lowered and now the skull coming in from the Milotic again the Wallace just trying to get some good damage off on the Snorlax and Snorlax going for the curse again so it looks like Annabelle might just try to uh, withstand all that has happened here and go for the curse and that might be that she's figuring you know what I've already powered up the Snorlax a little bit might as well just keep going with it because the Snorlax is actually surviving the Scalds relatively well. Milotic doesn't have the, the best of offensive capabilities, especially against something like a, a Snorlax, which is so bulky. And now the Milotic going for the Scald again, just trying to get this damage off on this Snorlax. Snorlax likely does not have a big method for recovery. And going for the Curse again is Annabelle, raising the uh, Snorlax's attack and defense here. So this Snorlax is going to be very, very scary once it, uh, once it gets going. Of course, his attack has been lowered, but now it probably has higher attack than it would have otherwise and now the Snorlax getting hurt by that burn a little bit so it will have to make a move soon as this Milotic is just relentlessly going for the Scald and 69 HP on the Snorlax here going for the Body Slam oh that should do a good amount of damage on the Milotic yes almost half and it does get the Paralysis oh so both trainers getting a little bit of luck here but now of course the Milotic this actually might have been a bit of a bad thing because the Milotic does have the Marvel Scale ability so with the status its defense is actually doubled so this might be a little bit of a concern for the Snorlax and Snorlax back at 69 HP. Let's see what it can do here. Milotic going for the Scald again. It looks like it might be. Yes, that should be a two hit KO from this range. This Body Slam is going to have to do a lot, or Milotic's going to have to get paralyzed. Let's see. Milotic taking a good amount of damage there. It looks like it might be a two hit KO from this range. So it looks like the Snorlax is in a little bit of a disadvantageous position at this moment. Let's see what happens though as the Snorlax gets hurt by the burn again. It all depends if this Milotic can get a move off here, and no, it is going to be paralyzed. Oh, this is this changes things up big time. Here comes the Body Slam again. Will it KO the Milotic from this range after Leftovers? No, it looks like the Leftovers did save it. So Milotic getting one more opportunity here to take down this Snorlax. Both trainers realizing that the opposing Pokemon is actually one of the biggest threats for their team. So they're just kind of tanking it out here, trying to make sure that the other goes down or at least is weakened enough. And the Milotic, oh, getting paralyzed again. 
It looks like the Snorlax might actually pull this off, which none of us would have thought after that first turn. Man, oh man, the Milotic going down here. Unfortunately, getting paralyzed two turns in a row, and the Snorlax will survive just barely. And now Wallace can send something out to try and take it down. Let's see what he's going to send out. He's going to send out the Swampert again. So Swampert coming back out on the field. Let's see what it can do against the Snorlax. Should be able to take it down with relative ease, even after all those curses. Here comes the Earthquake on the Snorlax. That will definitely, yes, take down the Snorlax. Snorlax going down to the Earthquake now. And now Annabelle has to try to find a way to take on this uh, this Swampert. She is going to send out the Salamence here. So Salamence will get that Intimidate off again on the Swampert. But Annabelle does have to be a little bit careful here. The Swampert might have Ice Punch. And Salamence going for the Draco Meteor, just trying to get as powerful an attack as it can off on this Swampert, realizing it's a defensive threat. Let's see. Yes, that is going to bring the Swampert below half, so a solid attack there. But Salamence's special attack will lower. And whoa! Wallace just going for the Stealth Rock here. Maybe just realizing how important it might be. But that's dangerous because he might not know that Annabelle Salamis is actually a mixed attacker and going for the Outrage here that will take the Swampert down. Swampert being taken down by the Outrage. Now, at the very least, Wallace has the Salamence locked into Outrage now. And he's going to go for the Starmie. Oh, so Salamence is locked in and the Starmie does have four times effective Ice Beam. Oh, it does have the Yachi Berry. So Starmie is a very powerful Pokemon, but can it withstand the Yachi Berry in its attack? Oh, no, the Salamence actually surviving thanks to the Yachi the Berry, the Yachi Berry coming in clutch there, and now the Salamence can get a solid outrage off on Starmie. Oh, but Starmie does survive, and now Salamence has become confused, though. That is the key. The Starmie does outspeed after all. Ice Beam coming in on the Salamence. I fear that will be the end of it. Yes, the Salamence going down. That Yachi Berry allowing it to get one more attack off, but Wallace did. He did get the Stealth Rock up, but at the cost, of course, of his Swampert, and now the Lucario coming out on the field. Now, we've seen how much of a menace this thing can can be. Wallace is going to switch preemptively into what? He's going to go into the Gyarados here. Oh, a great switch from him. That will intimidate the Lucario after all. He realizes how big of a threat this thing could possibly be. Especially with the Lucario Knight. Lucario Knight activating to make Mega Lucario prominent on the field. Mega Lucario has been an absolute terror throughout the tournament. Let's see what it's able to do on the Gyarados going for extreme speed. Now after the intimidate, no, that's not going to do much at all on Gyarados. Gyarados eating that up quite well. So it looks like Wallace has found a way to kind of stop this thing here. You wouldn't imagine that Lucario does have a lot of coverage against the Gyarados. So Annabelle's going to be forced to switch into the Latios now. Latios coming out on the field. Let's see what the uh, the Gyarados went for. The stones are now actually a factor. The Stealth Rock, that is. And the Dragon Dance coming in on the Gyarados. That will power up its attack and its speed. So this is actually quite dangerous here for Annabelle. She's going to have to get a solid attack off. Maybe something like the Draco Meteor on that Gyarados. The Latios does look to have have the leftovers perhaps a little bit of a tanky variant here on Annabelle's team let's see what this Gyarados has Gyarados going for oh it has super effective crunch uh oh oh Latios going down in one hit from the crunch unbelievable power from that Gyarados with the Dragon Dance and the Gyarados getting some more recovery here the legendary being taken down right away Annabelle not anticipating that crunch move and now the Lucario coming back out on the field now that it's not intimidated it might be able to pull something off going for the Extreme speed right away, wanting to outspeed that Gyarados. Won't do a whole lot of damage, though, to be honest. And here comes the bounce on the Gyarados aside. Dragon Dance bounce against any Pokemon on Annabelle's team is going to be a dangerous position for her to be in. Let's see what happens. The Gyarados going for bounce, getting a little bit of the recovery when it's in the air. But now, whoa, the Lucario surviving on 11 HP, just barely able to go with the close combat. Oh, and that will take the Gyarados down. So the Gyarados going down to the close combat. Mega Lucario showing just what it's made of. Of. Gyarados being taken down after that Dragon Dance. Looks like it could have possibly pulled off a sweep if it wasn't for this Lucario. And now the Tentacruel coming out. Wallace sending in something that will defend quite well against Lucario. But the close combat coming in on Tentacruel. Doing a good amount of damage, but Tentacruel actually eating that up pretty well. The problem is there. Annabelle would be ill-advised to switch into Lucario again due to Stealth Rock. And here comes the Scald. The Scald will definitely take down Mega Lucario. That is quite a feat in its own right. Now Wallace getting a little bit of momentum here as his tentacle heals up. But now Annabelle has the uh, the opportunity to try and pick up momentum of her own here. She sends in the Alakazam. Alakazam is a big, big threat for the rest of Wallace's team, especially this Tentacruel. Tentacruel is especially bulky, but I don't know about a Psychic. Let's see. 
Oh, and it will go down to the Psychic. Stab Psychic on that Tentacruel, doing too much damage. Now, Alakazam does outspeed the rest of Wallace's team. That's what's looking scary here. The Ludicolo now coming out on the field. Let's see what happens here as Alakazam goes for the Psychic. Stab Psychic on the Ludicolo. Ludicolo might be able to survive that. Yes, it does. Doing a little over half health. Oh, and setting up the Rain Dance for itself. So now the Ludicolo will have double speed thanks to its ability. Oh, man, what a play there by Wallace. The Ludicolo has Rain Dance on its Itself. So now it will be able to set up the speed boost and go for the hydro pump powered up by the rain Oh, I don't think there's a chance. No the Alakazam going down. What a play by Wallace now all of a sudden Annabelle is looking to be in a bit of a scary position as she does have her Weavile though and Weavile will definitely outspeed the Starmie That's the problem. It does have a priority move in Ice Shard against the Ludicolo too So Weavile posing a big big threat at the end of this battle here comes the Ice Shard on the Ludicolo Oh, and the Ludicolo survives, though. No way. The Hydro Pump boosted by the rain. And that is the end of the Weavile. The Weavile going down at the end. Ludicolo now losing his health due to the Life Orb. So it will go down as well. Wallace left with one Pokemon, his Starmie, which has been weakened substantially. Oh, man, what a battle that was. Arguably the leader of the Battle Frontier versus the leader of the Elite Four here, Wallace. Man, oh, man, an insane battle. Absolutely thrilling. Wallace will be moving to the semifinals. 1-0 over Annabelle. Before we go, I'd just like to remind you guys to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, if you enjoyed the video. Huge thanks goes to our YouTube members and patrons on Patreon. If you want to support the channel and get some cool perks, the links to support will be in the description below. This has been Soul Spectre, and I'll see you guys next time for some more true power.